Hello everybody and welcome to Bite Size Biology and today we are looking at cell structure and also diversity amongst tissues. So the main questions that you could be asked here are to draw a label diagram of plant and animal cell. Generally this is the first chapter that you do and there's a lot of repetition from genome cycle. Um, a little bit more detail however. Definitions come up very similar to what you would have learned from genome cycle. There is um, a very clear link to the food chapter, a chapter which comes up pretty much every year. Um, cell structure doesn't come up every year but it comes up fairly frequently. Um, it also links to like sub diffusion and osmosis. So you may not have heard those terms just yet but you will shortly. Um, that's the movement in and out of the cells. And then we move on to the adaptations. Uh, you have to name and state adaptations of both animal and plant tissues. You need to know two for each, two animals, two plants. And finally, there is an experiment involved in this, and that's to prepare and examine both plant and animal cells. So we'll get started. 2019 was the last time um, it came up, and it's specifically focusing on tissues. Um, and it kind of asked all the questions you could be asked on um, tissues. Tissues. So, organisation is one of the characteristics of life. This includes the organisation of cells. What is meant by the term tissue? Well, it is a group of cells working together to carry out function. Now, you might have a different definition or slightly worded differently or whatever, but um, that's perfectly fine. Now, name two types of animal tissue. So, specifically focusing on animal tissue. I always go for muscle and nervous and just learn those and be done with this. So, muscle tissue, nervous tissue. Because after that, you're going to be asked what are the adaptations of both muscle or nervous tissue. So for muscles, I say that they contract and relax. Uh, and also, you could say that um, they contain lots of mitochondria uh, because respiration takes place the most in muscles. Nervous, I have the myelin sheet to speed up impulses. Now, it's very probable that you haven't done or studied the muscular system, the skeleton, the muscles and the nervous system. So for now, you just learn these off. Um, but just learn them off and you'll see them, you'll come across them later on in the course. Finally then, what is meant by the term tissue culture and give another application of it? So a tissue culture is the growth of cells in the medium outside of the body. And actually has lots of applications in, real, in the real world. Um, such as IVF, making vaccines, which are, you know, particularly important these days with COVID. Um, micropropagation and cancer research. So they're basically all the questions you could be asked in tissues. The only difference is, only different question you could be asked, I suppose, is in relation to plant tissue rather than animal tissue. But we'll get to that later. So 2017, um, name a protein that has a fibrous structure. So that's keratin. So this is linking back to the food chapter, but there is a bit of to and fro from them. Where in the human body would you expect to find the protein um, referred to above? So keratin is found in your hair and nails. You don't need to say both, you can just say one. Give a role for a mineral other than calcium, which is required for plants. Now, you need to know at least two minerals for plants and two minerals for animals. So, you can see here, it says other than calcium there. And what did I go and write down? Calcium. So, I'll rub that out there now. Calcium is good for um, cell walls, for strength. But the other one I learn off is, and get my students to learn off, is magnesium. And you can notice my writing there definitely isn't as good as um, as what it is here. So magnesium and what it is, it helps with uh, um, photosynthesis. So assists with photosynthesis. It's generally found in the chlorophyll, um, but you don't need to know any detail really on it. Okay, as long as you refer to photosynthesis in some method, you'll be fine. Um, next, two reasons why water is required by living organisms. So it's a solvent and turgidity in plants. So if you've studied osmosis chapter, you'll see that come up here um, as well. You'll find a lot of cell structure is linking in with other chapters. Um, so it's very possible that you haven't done all these chapters just yet. But um, for now, just to learn them off and that understanding will come. Name the metallic element found in hemoglobin. So that's iron. That's why our blood tastes metallic. And then what type of food biomolecule is identified by Benedict solution? That's your reducing sugars there. So again, that's more linking into food and to cell structure. Now, you're given a diagram here, and this is 2017, and you're asked to label parts A and B. So B is the lipid tail, or just lipid is fine to say, by the way, um, and A is protein. So this is a cell membrane there, and it's referred to as a phospholipid, 
which means it consists of proteins and lipids and the lipid it contains um well, what's the word I'm looking for two fatty acids and one phosphate Molecules can move through cell membranes by various processes, name two processes. Well, you could actually say osmosis diffusion or active transport. There are three in total. You could say either, I just went through osmosis and diffusion because that's the most common. Suggest the reason why the organelle involved in aerobic respiration, so that's mitochondria, is found in different amounts in different cells. Well, different cells need different amounts of energy. Muscle cells in particular, must, well, that build up the muscle tissue um, require a lot of energy, so therefore they need lots of mitochondria. What term is used to describe organisms which contain a nucleus? Eukaryotic. What term is used to describe organisms that do not have a nuclei? Prokaryotic. And if you're learning off this and you're advising in terms of all the families out there, uh, only bacteria, also known as monera, are prokaryotic. Everything else is eukaryotic. So animals, which humans are classed as, and um, plants, fungi, and amoeba, all eukaryotic, which means they contain a nucleus. Name an organelle other than the nucleus, or sorry, other than the nucleus, in which can, um, contains genetic material. Well, there are two. Now, I put in both, and you can only just, for an exam, you can only put in one, either the mitochondrion or the chloroplast. I put in both because if they specifically refer to animals, well, then you have to put in the um, mitochondria only. But if they refer to plants, you can say either the mitochondria or the chloroplast. Uh, so just to be careful with that. Um, so that's why I put in both there. Uh, so 2016, it's a long question this time. And you can see the term eukaryotic and prokaryotic coming up. Give two features of eukaryotic cells which, which distinguish them from prokaryotic cells. Well, eukaryotic cells have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles and that's it now underneath it you're given um the tissues and generally there's a couple of different tissues and if you study plant um structure which is the first chapter in the plants um topic um you come across ground tissue xylem phloem and dermal tissue as well so four of them there and um, give one function of a named tissue so i said xylem tissue and it transports water and minerals. Then it, it was asking there for, um, for um, animals. So I just said nervous tissue here. Transfers um, electrical impulses. It didn't ask for the adaptation. It asked for the function. Part IV is looking for the, um, the adaptation. So xylem contains lignin. And it's also a long, narrow, continuous tube. So you could say either of those two there. Whereas nervous system um, contains the myelin sheath, which is responsible for insulating the, um, the electrical impulses. Again, if you haven't done that chapter, um, just bear with me for now. How does an organ differ from a tissue? Well, organs are groups of tissues working together. And then I define what a tissue is. Tissues are groups of cells working together. Okay, to find both, you don't know, like there's no marks attached to any of these, so you don't know the marker scheme, so make sure you go into detail if you're unsure. So VI, tissue culture, and we've seen that already, and state two requirements for it, so that's new. So tissue culture is the growth of cells in a medium outside the body, so in a Petri dish. Uh, and what do we need for it? Well, you need the correct temperature, you need the correct pH, you need the appropriate nutrients. Okay, so the correct temperature, pH, and nutrients, there's three, three, three items I said there. There's probably more than that, you can say. Okay, um, state the function of, labeled part, of part labeled A. Tons of students end up writing out what um, A is. They write down the course focus wheel. They don't say what it does, and it roughly focuses. Underneath us, you're given a bit of, um, a, bit of a calculation question, I suppose. You're asked to calculate the actual diameter of the cell. Well, find out the total magnification. Total magnification is 10 and 40. So 10 times 40 is 400. So that means if you're looking at the cell through the eyepiece there, it's been magnified 400 times. So you're told that the image of the cell is 0 0.8. So therefore, the actual diameter of the cell is going to be 400 times smaller than that, which is what we have here. 
Now, part B, I see this being answered incorrectly by my students all the time. They don't read the question. Answer the following questions in relation to the procedure when you're preparing animal cells for experimentation with the light microscope. A lot of students go straight to plant cells. You have to be careful there. Highlight it, as I have here, animal cells. How did you obtain the animal cells? Swabbed inside of the mouth with a cotton bud. What stain did you use? Methylene blue. A lot of students would have been talking about onion cells there, and they would have been talking about iodine there. Six marks gone straight away. Outline how you used the cover slip. You lowered it slowly at an angle with a mounted needle. Explain why the cover slip is used. Also, usually poorly answered. The cover slip is used to protect the lens, but the cover slip is applied at an angle to reduce air bubbles. So there are two different questions. Be careful with that. V. Describe how you examine the cells using the microscope. Well, just go straight to it. The coarse focus wheel to roughly focus, the fine focus wheel to sharpen. Image. And this is what the cell will look like, an animal cell. You'll see the cell membrane and you'll see the nucleus. You will not see the mitochondria. You'll not see the ribosomes. You're not going to see the vacuole. So do not label them. You're only going to be seen seeing this. Okay, finally, a last question I think it is. It is, what is a tissue? We've come across this again. Group of cells working together to carry out a function. Give an example, muscle. State a role here. Movement, to move the skeleton. Give one way in which the tissue is adapted, contains lots of mitochondria, it can contract and relax, explain tissue culture, give two reasons, or two examples of tissue culture. So very repetitive questions. So everybody, that's it there, that all the questions I could find anyhow on cell structure. Um, and just to be careful that you're reading the question properly, um, there's quite a few definitions and that's just learning off. And there is certainly a few links to other chapters for sure. So you'd see cell structure comes up in different chapters and so forth um, and not always just as question specifically by itself so everybody best of luck with this and I'll talk to you guys soon